welcome to today's class. Today we will be talking about the embryonic vertebrate brain. So when we start with embryonic vertebrate brain, we basically classify it into three parts that is present cephalon, mesen cephalon and normal cephalon, the forebrain, midbrain and the hindbrain. So these parts of the brain develop around 5 weeks, when the embryo is around 5 weeks, okay? And around 8 weeks we can say that forebrain can be differentiated into left hemisphere and right hemisphere. So this is how the development sequence of the brain takes place. Now when we study the forebrain, midbrain and the hindbrain, let's first understand it with the human brain. So the recent human brain, uh, the developed human brain and adult human brain when we talk about, you have the front portion or the anterior portion which is the forebrain. The anterior portion is also known as the rostral part. We can say it as rostral or the anterior part or the front of the brain. So we call it the forebrain. And you have rhomb uh, rhombus is drawn towards the end part or the hindbrain that is also known as the posterior part or the caudal part of the brain. Okay. Now, prosencephalon is divided as telencephalon and diencephalon, okay, and rhombocephalon is divided as metencephalon and myencephalon. So, this is one of the very important questions that is asked in most of the competitive examination. The correct order from forebrain to hindbrain. So, the series says you have telencephalon, then you have diencephalon. Then you have mesencephalon, that's the midbrain. You have metencephalon, and finally you have the malencephalon. Okay. So this is the correct order from forebrain towards the hindbrain. Okay. Now we'll be talking about each of these structures and how these structures develop into a, a part in the brain which is in the adult stage. So let's move on to the next slide where we try to understand the portions of the embryonic brain that have been developed. So you have the present cephalon, mesencephalon, and lumbocephalon that develops around 3 to 4 weeks. Around 5 weeks, as we said, you have this demarcation where you have the telencephalon, diencephalon, mesencephalon, and then lumbocephalon divides into metencephalon and myencephalon. And around uh, after 5 weeks, you have uh, these parts being developed as a part of mature brain where telencephalon forms the cerebrum. You have diencephalon which forms the thalamus, hypothalamus, epithalamus and subthalamus part of the brain. You have mesencephalon that converts as midbrain. Then you have metencephalon that forms the pons and the cerebellum region. And finally, the malencephalon that forms the medulla oblongata. Now, if you try to observe these in a recent human, in an adult human brain, you can see the rostral part, or I have mentioned here the anterior part of the brain. Okay, you have telencephalon and you have diencephalon, which forms a part of the uh, forebrain. Four okay, then you have the mesencephalon, which is mentioned in the green here that forms a part of the midbrain circled by a black outline. Then you have the part of rhombocephalon or the hindbrain which includes metencephalon and myencephalon in an adult brain. So metencephalon includes this region which later on in an adult forms pons and cerebellum. And finally you have myencephalon which forms a medulla oblongata. Okay. So this is the anterior part of the brain so towards the anterior part you have the forebrain and towards the caudal or the posterior part. So this is the posterior part of the brain. Towards the caudal or the posterior part you have the hindbrain. Okay. Or the rhombocephalon. Now let's start to understand each of these parts in detail. Okay. So let's move on to the first part, the first slide here. Okay. So we will start with the first part of the brain that is the telencephalon. Now telencephalon as we said is a part of presencephalon. The main functions of telencephalon is determination of intelligence, 
then you have personality it deals with planning and organization okay then you have the sense of smell and touch these are the two perceptions that are observed under parents of long so when we talk about present self lord or the four brain as we said it includes telus self lord and dance self lord besides these two the four brain also includes the lateral ventricle and the third ventricle okay telus self lord when time matures as uh, in the next slide we had already talked about as it matures as cerebrum okay so in the adult brain you have telin cerebrum converting uh, forming into a the part of the brain that is cerebrum okay so telin cerebrum uh, this this was about telin cerebrum okay now telin cerebrum it's important what it includes is the cerebral cortex of the cerebral region then you have the basal ganglia region you have the olfactory bulbs okay so you have the smell so you have olfactory bulb okay and the basal ganglia now let's move on to the next part of the brain the fourth brain that is the diencephalon so when we talk about diencephalon it basically controls the autonomic function the endocrine functions so under diencephalon you have the autonomic functions okay you have the endocrine functions okay then the uh, diencephalon also deals with hearing vision uh, the sense of smell and taste so you have hearing vision taste so these all fall under the category of diencephalon as we previously mentioned diencephalon when matures forms the thalamus you have hypothalamus then you have epithalamus and you have subthalamus so these are the regions formed by diencephalon okay as we mentioned it mainly deals with autonomic functions endocrine functions uh, the touch sensation hearing vision and taste perceptions okay the next we will be talking about is mesencephalon now for mesencephalon we will move on to a different diagram where we will be talking about the parts of mesencephalon so mesencephalon is basically divided into four parts that is tectum tegmentum substrate miaca okay and then you have cerebral ventricle so when we talk about let's first start with tegmentum so tegmentum is a basic part that deals with motor functions uh, kind of awareness okay so let's talk about tegmentum first so tegmentum deals with motor functions talks about awareness now to be very clear we are talking about mid brain here so this is the structure for mid brain on mesen cerebellum okay so we are only focusing about mid brain right now we have already talked about present cerebellum as the fore brain so here we will be talking about mid brain mid brain basically includes four parts that's tegmentum tectum then you have substrate miaca substantia miaca and you have cerebral ventricle so these are the four major parts we would be talking about mid brain so we will first start with tegmentum so tegmentum is as it deals with motor functions talks about awareness and it also regulates some of the autonomic functions okay so this is about tegmentum now tectum can be classified into two parts that superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus so you have the superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus 
Now, what's important to understand here is the tectal part of the brain only focuses on two things that's auditory and visual responses. So, under superior colliculus, you have the visual response that's understood, and another inferior colliculus, the brain tries to take out the auditory response or the hearing response. <coughs> So these two parts of the brain, that is the superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus together form the part of tectum. Okay. Then you have the next part of the brain that is substantial nyandra. The main, the very most foremost important function of substantial nyandra is it secretes a neurotransmitter which is known as dopamine. That's the foremost and the most important part under midbrain or mesencephalon. So you have substantia nyaga, which releases the neurotransmitter, which is known as dopamine. Besides that, substantia nyaga also helps to regulate the mood. Okay, and finally, the important function is control of voluntary movement. So you have voluntary movement that is being controlled. And under tegmenta, what was there was autonomic functions that are controlled. And under substantial nyanga, you have voluntary movements that you willingly try to do are being controlled. And finally, you have the cerebral pedicle. Cerebral pedicle is basically a collection of exons which are running from cerebral cortex to the brain stem. So you have exons collection. Okay. And these collection of exons, basically what they try to do is, they try to control again the voluntary movement or the voluntary motor functions. Okay. So just a quick recap of what we have done under midbrain or mesencephalon. So midbrain includes four major parts, uh, that's tegmentum, tectum, substantial nyanga, and cerebral pedicle. Uh, tegmenta, as we said, deals with awareness, motor functions and autonomic functions. Under, under tectum, you have two parts, that's the superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus. In the diagram, we can see this region is the superior colliculus and this is the inferior colliculus. So, the superior region deals with the visual responses or the uh, responses that we can see. And the inferior colliculus deals with the auditory or the hearing responses. Then you have substantia nyanga. The very foremost function is it releases the neurotransmitter which is known as dopamine. It regulates mood and controls the voluntary movement. And finally you have the cerebral pentacle. It's a collection of exons. Uh, under these, uh, the main function is uh, they try to control the voluntary motor functions. And these cerebral pentacles, uh, the collection of exons run from cerebral cortex till the basic brain, uh, the brain stem. Okay. So with this we cover the midbrain. Now let's move on to the last section of the embryonic brain, which is the rhombocephalon or the hind brain. So let me switch on to the previous slide. So we would be talking about metencephalon and mancephalon. So metencephalon, as we see, uh, converts into pons and cerebellum in an adult brain, and mancephalon converts into Medulla oblongata. Okay, so we will be talking about these two here. That's the metencephalon and the myencephalon, which are part of the rhombocephalon or the hind brain. Okay, so now, as we said, rhombocephalon is the hind brain towards the posterior side. It's also considered as the inferior region of the brain or the inferior portion of the brain. So let's first talk about metencephalon. So metencephalon. Uh, controls the following functions. The foremost functions are arousal. Since it later on develops into cerebellum, we can coordinate it with the functions of cerebellum. So the important function here is balancing the body. So you have balance as one of the major functions. Then you have cardiac reflexes. Okay. These are another some of the major functions. Fine muscle tone Muscle, muscle movements. So you have fine muscle tone movements. Okay. And finally, the um, 
sleep, the sleep patterns. Okay. So these are controlled under met uh, metencephalon. As we already saw in the uh, previous slide, metencephalon converts as pons and cerebellum in an adult brain. Okay. Then you have the myencephalon. Myencephalon, uh, so metencephalon is the posterior part of the cerebrum region as we can see. Okay. And then we move on to the final section that is the myencephalon. So myencephalon deals with the following functions. You have the autonomic functions first of all. Okay. As we saw, uh, the myencephalon converts into medulla in an adult brain. So all the functions that are related to medulla would be part of this. So it would include the conduction pathways. Then you have breathing. Okay. Uh, then some of the important functions would be swallowing, heart rate. You have heart rate. And so on. Okay. So with this, we cover the embryonic brain uh, structure where we first classify these into three parts, the forebrain, midbrain and the hindbrain. The forebrain includes the prosencephalon, then you have mesencephalon and thrombocephalon. Prosencephalon includes two major parts that is the telencephalon and diencephalon. We have already completed. Telencephalon has been discussed, forms the cerebral part of the brain. Okay. Then you have the diencephalon region followed by mesencephalon. Mesencephalon is divided into four parts, tegmentum, tectum, substantia nigra, and then you have the cerebral pentacle. Okay. Then you have rhombocephalon which is divided as midencephalon and myencephalon. So these are some of the very important questions that are asked in any of the examinations. Uh, mostly the objective pattern questions you have the order of the embryonic vertebrate uh, question and uh, the embryonic vertebrate stages that are asked. This was one of the most important questions for this year. Okay. Then you have the developments into various parts which is another important question. So telencephalon, just a quick recap of what we have done forms the cerebrum, then you have diencephalon which forms the thalamus, hypothalamus, epithalamus and the subthalamus, you have mesencephalon which forms or develops as midbrain, you have metencephalon which forms the pons and the cerebellum region and finally the myencephalon which forms the medulla oblongata. We would be talking about the brain, the structure of brain, the various loops of an adult brain in the next class, till then have a good day ahead.